Hello, my name is Anil Pillai. I'm a professor and Fellows Indoor Chair in the Fellows Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at UT Health Houston. The brain is the most complex part of our body. I was always interested to understand how the different cell types present in the brain interact to each other. Our current studies at UT Health Houston investigate how immune system impacts the brain function. Immune system plays a major role in regulating neuronal functions both during development and adulthood. If you look at the uh, literature in psychiatry, especially focusing on immune changes in psychiatric disorders, changes in immune system have been well documented in many neuropsychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia, depression, as well as in autism spectrum disorder. So our studies are focusing on an important player in the immune system called complement pathway. Now the question is, what is complement system and why it is so important? Complement plays a critical role during neurodevelopment. It helps in the synaptic pruning, a process by which weak or non-functional synapses are removed during the development how this is going to help the developmental process. So when these weak synapses are removed, the remaining functional synapses get more strengthened. What happens if the complement system is not functioning well during development? There will be a deficit in the synapse removal process and which can result in more number of non-functional synapses in the brain, which is going to result in impaired communication among the neurons and all of these changes are eventually lead to functional impairments that we see in neurodevelopmental conditions such as autism spectrum disorder. So our previous studies to address the role of complement system during development, what we have done, we investigated the complement protein profile in the brain samples collected from subjects with autism spectrum disorder. And what we found was very interesting. We found that subjects with autism spectrum disorder have less number of complement or less expression of complement proteins, which makes sense because if you don't have a functional complement system, then the synapse removal process is going to get affected and you will end up in more number of synapses. And these synapses are not functional and that's going to affect the brain plasticity. Let us think the other side of the story. What happens if the complement system is not functioning well during adulthood or in the adult brain? For example, if the complement system is activated in the adult brain, what happens? Under these conditions, for example, let's talk about some of the risk factors associated with psychiatric conditions trauma, chronic stress, or other pathological insults. So under these conditions, complement system is activated, which leads to the removal of even functional synapses, results in impaired synaptic plasticity. Eventually, these changes leads to cognitive dysfunction. Previous studies done in our laboratory have shown that for the first time, complement proteins are highly expressed in the brain of depressed subjects, which explains if there is activation of complement system in the adult brain can lead to removal of functional synapses. So all these studies are very interesting and based on these observations that we have done over the last 10 to 15 years in the area of complement system and also in other immune signaling molecules, our current studies are focusing to understand which are the cell types in the brain or which brain region is important in the complement action? How do we address these questions? We use human postmortem brain samples. We use animal models, which are also important in addressing some of these mechanistic pathways, especially looking at the cell type and region specificity in complement action. In addition to human samples and animal models, we use in vitro cell systems. At the pharmacological level, we also test the potency of complement inhibitors in preclinical models. We hope that 
understanding the cellular and molecular mechanisms by which complement regulates the brain plasticity will eventually help us to identify cellular substrates or novel targets for therapeutic development in psychiatric disorders.